The old book Doluo. My writing will eyes are not serious has been serialized in millions of words Wanxiang Mecca Martial Soul, Contract Doluo Goddess. Wearable Mecca Soul, when the goddess wears Yi Chiu, has various wonderful abilities. The memories and spirits of the two are completely linked together. Yi Chiu said, Jie Jie Jie. Okay. You're really not human. Xiao Wu. Don't. Don't say anything. Xiao Wu, I listen to everything from you. Congenital soul power stacking, the cultivation speed increases by one and is greater than two. Zhu Zhu Qing. Yi Chiu, please help me become stronger. Without saying a word, Yi Chiu put on a mech for her and made progress together. Collaborative operations allow auxiliary forces to enjoy the pleasure of combat. Ning Rongrong put on the mecha that Yi Chiu had transformed into and killed everyone in the soul fighting arena. Copy goddess data and use goddess soul techniques, the first soul skill, jade rabbit mech, combined. Second soul skill, blue silver mech, combined. Third soul skill, spirit cat mecha, combined. Catch me. Tang San, look at my angel mech. Purify evil. Hulaina. Yi Chiu, I also want to make a contract with you. Yi Chiu. This. It's a bit difficult to handle. It seems like I don't really need your soul skills, do I? Keywords of the novel. Doluo. Mecha Martial Soul, Opening Contract Xiaowu No Pop-Up Window, Doluo. Mecha Martial Soul, Opening Contract Xiaowu TXT Complete Collection Download, Doluo. Mecha Martial Soul, Opening Contract Xiaowu Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1. The Little Boy Selling Candy You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 The Little Boy Selling Candy Doluo Continent, Southwest of Tiendo Empire. Fasno Province, south of Nodding City, Holy Soul Village. A small village with only over 300 households, named after a soul saint who had walked out of nowhere. Just as the genius was about to dawn, scattered villagers walked towards the farmland outside the village. On the way, there was a child who looked only five or six years old, dressed in coarse linen clothes, with flowing black hair, big black eyes, and a very innocent smile. At this moment, there was a square wooden box hanging around his neck, filled with colorful candies. This is all the honey he picked up from climbing trees, combined with various fruits, to make it. It is his means of self-reliance. Xiaoqiu, come and get your aunt two honey orange flavored lollipops. That old six at home is really rare with this thing. Okay, Aunt John. Yi Chiu happily ran over and took out two from the wooden box, handing them to Aunt Zhang, who was somewhat burly. Aunt Zhang also took out two copper coins from her arms and placed them in Yi Chiu's small hand. Take it. Thank you, Aunt Zhang, take your time. Yi Chiu waved at Aunt Zhang who was far away. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see a small hill just over a hundred meters high next to Holy Soul Village, where a slender figure swiftly flew down from above. That is a child about the same age as Yi Chiu, but his skills are not even as good as those of adults. He often bears the scorching sun, and compared to Yi Chiu, he appears dark. His clothes are simple yet clean, and his black short hair is very neat. Yo! Third, wake up so early. Yi Chiu looked at the figure with a slight inexplicable light in his eyes, waved his hand at him, and shouted loudly. Upon hearing his voice, Tang San, who was constantly getting up, suddenly stumbled and almost fell. Wrinkled his brow and immediately looked around cautiously. Seeing that no one noticed her abnormality, she looked at Yi Chiu with displeasure. Yi Chiu, I've already told you, don't call me that. For the little brats in the village, Tang San has always been out of place. After speaking, he stopped showing off his body movements and ran honestly towards home. Cut, I just want you to adapt in advance. Yi Chiu pursed her lips. He really wants to call out a few little losers, but he's also afraid of having a few silent sleeve arrows on his forehead. 
Xiao Chiu. Suddenly, an old voice came. I saw an old man pacing towards me in the distance, looking in his sixties. He had a slender figure, neat clothes, and his pale hair was meticulously cut, looking energetic. Grandpa Jack, what do you call me? Do you need to buy sugar? Yi Chiu quickly ran forward and looked up at the good old man in the village, the village chief, old Jack. You child. All right, give me five. Old Jack smiled helplessly and still took out five copper coins from his arms. He also had several grandchildren at home. Okay, here you are. Yi Chiu smiled innocently, but when she put away the money, she was not shy at all. After stabilizing the coins, Yi Chiu Tsai looked back at old Jack. Grandpa Jack, tell me what's bothering you to come to the village to find me. Ha <laughs> ha. You're really a clever little ghost. Grandpa, I'm going door dot to dot door to notify those eligible children to attend the martial soul awakening ceremony in three days. Old Jack placed his hand on Yi Chiu's head, with a strong expectation in his eyes, which could even be considered extravagant. So it's like this. Yi Chiu blinked and couldn't help but imagine in her heart. All right, remember to join us then. Grandpa, I still have to go to Tang Hao's old drunkard's place. Hmm Grandpa Jack, take your time. Yi Chiu waved her little hand and bid farewell to old Jack, then put away the smile on her face. I didn't have the heart to sell candy anymore. Holding the box in front of me, I walked towards my own home. It was said to be home, but it also seemed unusually desolate, just a lonely and dead cabin. Like most travelers, Yi Chiu, as a difficult-to-conceive child, has been unmarried since birth. I grew up eating a hundred meals from a young age. It wasn't until last year that he started this job of digging a nest, barely relying on himself. Lying in bed, Yi Chiu exhaled a long breath. I don't know what kind of martial soul I will awaken. How many levels of innate soul power can there be? This is something that Yi Chiu has been thinking about since her recent journey. As a student in his past life, his favorite thing was reading novels, and he was also very familiar with Dolua Continent. This is a magical world where the strong have a unified name. Soul Master and the martial soul and innate soul power of a soul master largely determine the upper limit of a soul master. Ah, uh, I hope I can awaken a powerful martial soul. Otherwise, how can I give them a warm home? As if thinking of something beautiful, Yi Chiu couldn't help but smile on her face. Early in the morning three days later, led by old Jack, Yi Chiu followed him to the martial soul hall in the center of the village. Of course. This so dot called Martial Soul Hall is just a larger wooden house. As usual, Yi Chiu hung a square wooden box around her neck and began to sell it. The kids and parents are here, but it's a good time to sell candy. Xiao San, how are you? Do you want some too? Yi Chiu leaned in front of Tang San and handed him a grass flavored lollipop. No need. Tang San shook his head, not interested in this little thing. Before he could finish speaking, Yi Chiu stuffed the candy into her mouth and walked to another place. He was just polite. The sucking sound made by Yi Chiu made Tang San frown. Just finished a few orders, Yi Chiu finally saw the rumored blind Dolua Su Yuntao. She looks good, with a hint of pride and superiority in her eyebrows and eyes. After a few polite words with old Jack, he began his work. Children. Stand in a row. His attitude towards children like Yi Chiu is much gentler. Adding Yi Chiu, there were a total of nine children, and he, who had just received a small sum of money, ranked last. My name is Su Yuntao, a level 26 soul master, and I am your guide. I will awaken your martial souls one by one. Remember, no matter what happens later, don't be afraid. Su Yuntao made a simple self-introduction and placed six black stones in a hexagonal shape on the ground, holding a blue crystal ball in his hand. Then signal the first child to stand among them. Don't be afraid, close your eyes and feel carefully. After speaking, 
Su Yuntao let out a low shout. A lone wolf, possessed. Amidst the children's horrified gazes, Su Yuntao's visible muscles bulged high, his eyes bright green, and many wolf-like features appeared on his body. Yi Chiu's eyes also flashed with a strong surprise, and she even felt a little excited in her heart. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Wanxiang Mecha Martial Soul You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Wanxiang Mecha Martial Soul A six-pointed star surrounded by black stones, shimmering with gold, shining into the boy's body. Extend your right hand, Su Yuntao's green eyes stared at the boy, commanding solemnly. The boy instinctively extended his right hand, and suddenly, all the dots of light rushed out. In an instant, a sickle appeared in his palm. All right, let's test our soul power. Su Yuntao handed the blue crystal ball in his hand and used a saying, martial soul sickle, no soul power. Next one. Dot. Martial soul blue silver grass, no soul power, next one. Quickly, the first seven children had already completed their martial soul awakening. No surprises. They all lack innate soul power and cannot become noble soul masters. It was Tang San's turn, and Su Yuntao almost mechanically said. Martial soul blue silver grass, soul power. Wait. Hiss. Innate full soul power, Su Yuntao took a cold breath. Surprisingly, it has innate soul power. The mature and steady Tang San still awakened the blue grass. Su Yuntao looked at the blue crystal ball in his hand with a strong shock in his eyes. But thinking that the opponent's martial soul is blue silver grass, I couldn't help but sigh. Unfortunately. It's a pity he's a useless martial soul. Abandoned martial soul. Tang San stared blankly at the blue silver grass in his hand, he had no idea about these. But as someone who constantly practices the Shentian treasure record of the Tang clan, he never easily exposes everything about himself. At this moment, he was tightly gripping his left hand. There's a hammer over there. All right, next one. Swinging Tang San back, Su Yuntao tidied up his emotions and turned his gaze to Yi Chiu at the end. Yi Chiu followed suit and stood within the six pointed star. A burst of golden light scattered on Yi Chiu's body, and he felt the blood in his body boil a bit. It seems like something has broken open inside the body. The strands of white energy on the surface of Yi Chiu's body overflow. Upon seeing this, Su Yuntao's eyes lit up and a hint of hope rose in his heart. After a moment, a humanoid, somewhat rounded iron knot phantom appeared behind Yi Chiu. What kind of martial soul is this? Su Yuntao looked at Yi Chiu's martial soul in confusion. Yi Chiu also looked at her martial soul in surprise. The main body is mainly white, covered with thick armor plates, each of which is engraved with complex patterns and flows with a blue luster, making the entire mecha seamlessly integrated. The reason why it is said to be somewhat round is because its body shape is similar to that of Yi Chiu at this time. A pair of eyes shone brightly, and although the limbs were thick, they didn't seem to have much aggression. Like an unopened sword, and like a sleeping giant beast, it will awaken at any time, displaying its unparalleled power. Uncle, my martial soul is called Wanxiang Mecha. Tang San, who was supposed to leave, also stopped because of Su Yuntao's puzzled voice. Looking at Yi Chiu's mechanical martial soul, I also became curious. Wanxiang Mecha. Yes, it told me. Yi Chiu pointed to her martial soul and nodded. All right, let's test your innate soul power. Su Yuntao didn't hesitate too much. There are various martial souls in the world, and he couldn't recognize them all. Mmm. Yi Chiu nodded. He was no longer very worried about his innate soul power. He could feel that his martial soul was extraordinary. Cover the crystal ball with your little hands. In the blink of an eye, this crystal ball shone like a brilliant gemstone. The dazzling blue halo is exposed, indescribably moving. Oh my goodness. It's innate soul power again. 
Su Yuntao widened his eyes and immediately threw an olive branch at Yi Chiu without thinking. This was a good opportunity for him to get promoted and a raise. Child. Would you like to go to the Marshall Soul Hall with me? Yi Chiu, who was still somewhat complacent, froze with a smile when he heard his question. This question is undoubtedly asking him, do you want to die? Tang Hao, that old Biden is not a fuel-dot-efficient lamp. If he finds out, he will have to fly his ashes overnight. Her mind turned rapidly, and Yi Chiu did not immediately refuse. Instead, she whispered to Su Yuntao. Tang San was surprised to see that Yi Chiu was also naturally full of soul power. Looking at Yi Chiu, who was communicating with Su Yuntao, he couldn't hear what they were saying and could only frown. After a while, he left alone. It was time for his father to get up and have kanji. Okay. I'll see you in Nodding City then. For a long time, Su Yuntao saw that Yi Chiu had already made up his mind, so he no longer insisted. But instead, he took out a pen and paper and opened two certificates for Yi Chiu. One is a martial soul certificate, and the other is an identity certificate. Getting what she wanted, Yi Chiu was in a great mood and generously invited Su Yuntao to have a lollipop. Master, how's it going? Are there any children in our village who can become soul masters this year? Su Yuntao, who was carrying sugar, had just arrived outside with Yi Chiu when old Jack eagerly welcomed him. Su Yuntao's arrogance on his face decreased slightly, and his tone also improved a lot. Old Jack, congratulations. This year, your village has produced two innate full soul powers. Unfortunately, one is a disabled martial soul. Two innate soul powers. Oh my god. Old Jack felt like he was in a dream, unbelievable, not even hearing Su Yuntao's last words clearly. Yeah, but unfortunately there is one that is called Abandoned Martial Soul Blue Silver Grass. What? There's a useless martial soul called Blue Silver Grass. Old Jack's face was mixed with joy and sorrow, a little heartbroken. That's innate soul power. All right, I'll go first. I have to go to the next village. Before old Jack could ask more questions, Su Yun Tao happily walked out of the village. Old Jack lowered his head to see Yi Chiu, who was extremely proud, and exclaimed in surprise. Xiao Chiu, the innate full soul power in the master's mouth, wouldn't it be you? That's right, it's me. Yi Chiu nodded, took out a piece of paper from her arms, handed it to old Jack, and said at the same time. The other one is Tang San, whose martial soul is blue silver grass. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't expect you to have such outstanding talent. Your parents are alive in heaven and will definitely be happy for you. Old Jack looked delighted and crouched down to look at Yi Chiu in front of him. Then he looked at the direction Tang San was leaving inside. What a pity for Tang San's child. There's also such an alcoholic father. Xiao Chiu, take a good rest during this period. Grandpa will take you to the Soul Master Academy then. Got it, Grandpa Jack. Nah. Please have some candy. Watching old Jack walk towards Tang San's house, Yi Chiu happily returned home. Along the way, Yi Chiu was studying her martial soul. Yi Chiu didn't expect that his Wanxiang Mecca had two forms of martial soul possession. One way is to wear it yourself. One way is to transform into a mech and merge with others. The premise of integration is that the other party is willing and not resistant. After the combination, the two can achieve the unity of their thoughts. The specific method of unity remains to be experienced. Yi Chiu quickly put down the box hanging around her neck and stood in front of a basin of water. I can't try to fit in with others for now. Let's wear it ourselves first. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Explorations from Tang How You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Explorations from Tang How Yi Chiu Tried to Stimulate Her Martial Soul. Silently, blue stripes appeared on Yi Chiu's body, and then the mech quickly covered her entire body. 
After being possessed by the martial soul, Yi Chiu's body became heavy, and the soil under her feet sank slightly. Looking at herself on the water, Yi Chiu was particularly satisfied. After the attachment, it is no longer smooth, but instead full of a sense of power. The sharp and angular components all exude a cold sense of killing. Just like the nano soldiers in previous anime. Strangely, the metal mech was tightly pressed against the body, but could not feel any coldness. The dazzling eyes can also see the relevant properties of some objects, and the flying mosquitoes seem to slow down their speed. Yi Chiu tried to take action, although it was heavy, her voice was not loud. Bang! He punched the ground hard and was able to create a small hole several centimeters deep picking up the bricks from the pile, Yi Chiu had a lot of fun playing, entertaining herself and performing wildly with bare hands chopping bricks and iron heads breaking bricks. Even boldly, I tried the iron crotch technique. In less than five minutes, Yi Chiu could no longer sustain herself and lay panting on the ground. Although tired, his face was full of smiles. Wanxiang Mecca. My future capital in the realm of carefree soul masters is still very good. Three months later, Yi Chiu simply packed her things and followed Old Jack to Tang San's house. Old Jack couldn't bear to let Tang San's talent bury him, so he went to another village to get a spot for a working dot class student. That is to say, Yi Chiu will go to Notting Junior Soul Master College with Tang San to study. Tang Hao. I came as agreed to send Tang San to Notting City. Yi Chiu and Old Jack entered Tang Hao's blacksmith's shop together, facing a heat wave and an unpleasant smell of alcohol. I saw that the corners of the walls on both sides were piled with broken copper and iron, as well as some bottles and jars that had been filled with inferior liquor. Oh, good morning. The mistress. Yi Chiu once handed a candy to Tang San, perhaps understanding what innate soul power meant. This time, Tang San did not refuse, put down the forging hammer in his hand, and reached out to take Yi Chiu's candy. Thank you. Yi Chiu looked at him with some surprise, while Tang Hao, who was sitting at the dining table drinking heavily and had a messy beard, ignored old Jack. Just lifting his eyelids, he gave Yi Chiu a faint glance, his hazy eyes couldn't tell any emotions. A hoarse and unpleasant voice sounded, Are you Yi Chiu? That child with innate soul power. It's me, Uncle Tang. Yi Chiu still looked proud, but in her heart, she was sweating for herself. This bastard must have had some ulterior motives towards his delicate young flower. Didn't the people in the Martial Soul Hall invite you to join them? Tang Hao took a sip of wine and asked casually. But Yi Chiu's careful liver was lifted up. With a smile, he explained. Of course he invited me and said he wanted to give me some benefits, but I didn't agree to him. I'm used to it all by myself, and I still want to be more free. Yi Chiu's big black eyes looked sincerely at Tang Hao. He looks very deceptive with a proper appearance. However, Yi Chiu's words are also half true and half false, and he does want to be more free-spirited. Uncle Tang, do you eat sugar? Yi Chiu no longer asked him to say anything more, holding a colorful candy in both hands for him to choose from. Mmm. Tang Hao glanced at him, nodded lightly, and then grabbed all the candies in Yi Chiu's hand with a big hand. The smile on Yi Chiu's face stiffened visibly. Black big eyes blinked, as if about to cry. Seeing this scene, Tang Hao's heart also calmed down. As expected, he was still a child, just holding a little candy and looking so unremarkable. But with innate soul power, we can only talk about a dozen or so in a hundred years. By cultivating it well, one can also become the right dot hand man of their own son. Tang Hao, don't go too far. You even grab children's things. Old Jack just finished packing things for Tang San when he saw the pitiful Yi Chiu, who had lost a lot of candy. What's the fuss about? Isn't it just some sugar? And it was voluntarily given to me by him. Tang Haodo didn't respond either. I knocked on a few grass-flavored candies, my eyes showing a drunken expression, as if there was his wife in the candy. 
squeezing and savoring, I looked at my big brother. Junior, when you're at school, you should take care of each other. Got it, Dad. Tang San obediently nodded and glanced at Yi Chiu, who was pouting. Old Jack also glared at Tang Hao and said, You dead alcoholic, you finally said something in human language. Upon hearing Old Jack's insults to his father, Tang San's eyes couldn't help but chill. All right, don't cry and lose face. Give it back to you. Tang Hao picked and ate those grass-flavored ones, and then returned them to Yi Chiu again. Thank you, Uncle Tang. Yi Chiu suddenly had a happy smile on her face, but she exclaimed in her heart that this old boy was not well-intentioned. I finally understand why Tang San changed his attitude towards himself. Tang Hao squinted his eyes and didn't say anything before getting up and returning to the inner room. Dad, Tang San looked at Tang Hao's back and murmured to himself. Hey. Yi Chiu whispered in her heart, looking at the candy in her hand and laughing all the time. All right, Tang San, don't be reluctant to let your alcoholic father go either. You can still come back in the future. We should also go, Xiao Chiu, keep up. Got it, Grandpa Jack. Yi Chiu was carrying her small package and quickly caught up. Tang San just turned around when Tang Hao's voice came from inside the room. Third, remember what I said to you. I remember, Dad. After speaking, Tang San followed Yi Chiu's footsteps and looked at his back thoughtfully. Yi Chiu, who was walking ahead, pressed her lips. Only he knows what Tang Hao said, it's all for fun. What protects grass with a hammer? I have been using grass to cover up the hammer. When Tang Hao saw the blue silver grass martial soul, he must have had a mediocre reaction and felt useless. As soon as he saw the Houtian hammer, he wept deeply and said that he truly deserved to be my son. Hatue Nodding City is located at the junction of two empires and is also adjacent to the Starry Forest. Holy Soul Village is not far from Nodding City. It's very convenient to run here. Otherwise, Tang Hao wouldn't have hidden himself here with Tang San. Most of them don't have much transportation. Yi Chiu and his group walked towards Nodding City. During this period, Old Jack also talked a lot about soul masters. Yi Chiu was familiar with these basic things, but Tang San listened with great interest. The three of them walked under the sun for most of the day, only filling their stomachs with a little dry food at noon. It wasn't until the afternoon that I saw the distant city wall. Although Nodding City is not a big city, it is not far from the border and its walls are quite thick. Entering the city gate also requires routine inspection. Two little guys, will send you to the college later. Don't wander around the college. When the semester ends, Grandpa Jack will come pick you up. Thank you Grandpa Jack. Well, let's go. Old Jack also felt a bit helpless. These commoners couldn't afford to stay in any hotels, so he had to hurry back early. Quickly, after several inquiries, the three finally arrived at Notting College located to the west of Notting City. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Kowtow and Acknowledge Father, Seeking Follow. Up Reading, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Kowtow and Acknowledge Father Seeking follow. Up reading, the main entrance of Notting College is a tall arch with a large gilded plaque surrounded by an iron fence. There are two gatekeepers at the entrance. Stop. This is not something you rural people can come to. As soon as they approached, a domineering gatekeeper stopped Yi Chiu and the others from drinking. Old Jack quickly apologized and said, This little brother, these two children are working. Class students sent to our village this year. While speaking, he also handed over the certificate opened by the Marshal Soul Hall in his hand. Laughing to death, the chicken coop still thinks of a phoenix. Blue silver grass still has innate soul power. Where did the scammer come from? The gatekeeper just looked at the certificate above and immediately became suspicious. This disdainful tone made Yi Chiu very unhappy. Old Jack's face also looked ugly, 
but he still swallowed his anger and said, This is a proof personally given by the deacon of the Marshal Soul Hall. We dare not forge it. The gatekeeper was even more displeased to see that old Jack still wanted to use the name of the Marshal Soul Hall to suppress him. Humph. Are you saying it's true? The Holy Soul Village, I think it's similar to being called Beggar Village. What are you saying? The gatekeeper's words undoubtedly offended old Jack Scales and he let out a loud roar. The gatekeeper was scared back a step, and his face immediately turned ugly, with a hint of ferocity. What's wrong? Are you not convinced? You look at your tattered clothes and say you're beggars, they all praise you. As he spoke, the gatekeeper was about to take action and pushed towards old Jack's chest. At that moment, under Yi Chiu's gaze, a thin and small figure appeared between the two. Yi Chiu's eyes froze, and his right hand also transformed into a steel fist, waiting for the opportunity to move. Tang San quickly cut off his small hand, with a dark jade color on his face. Due to his height, the hand that should have been cut at the bend of his arm caught the gatekeeper's wrist directly. Control the crane and capture the dragon. The hand that can pick up the forging hammer is definitely powerful, and the gatekeeper's eyes flashed with pain. Tang San, however, refused to let go. With a sweep of his calf, he hit the bend of his leg and made the gatekeeper kneel down. In Tang San's surprised gaze, Yi Chiu's eyes were sharp and his hands were quick, transforming into Lao Lu. Rushing up to the gatekeeper, he used his golden right hand, which had been trained for a long time, and directly gave him two big eyed cannons. The gatekeeper quickly covered his eyes in pain and fell to the ground. Xiao San, Xiao Chiu, Yu, Yu. Old Jack stared blankly at the two thin figures blocking in front of him. You're looking for death. Being knocked down by two children and having an extra pair of panda eyes. The gatekeeper was extremely angry, let out a roar, and immediately got up from the ground and rushed towards Yi Chiu and the others. Tang San's gaze turned cold. Tang Sek Xientian Treasure Record General Outline, Article 3. Confirm that the opponent is an enemy. As long as they have a way to take death, do not be lenient, otherwise it will only add trouble to oneself. In the corner of Yi Chiu's eyes, Tang San lifted his left hand slightly and quietly opened the safety of the silent sleeve arrow. Just as I was about to give the gatekeeper a small and exquisite throat-locking arrow, a hoarse voice sounded. That's enough. Yi Chiu, who was familiar with the plot, immediately understood who it was. That's Yu Xiao Jiang with half a protagonist template, Master Yu. The gatekeeper was momentarily stunned, and then his anger turned into flattery. Immediately nodding and bowing, he said, Master, you're back. Yi Chiu and others turned their heads to see a man in black bachelor's clothing, about four to fifty years old. A black inch, with a face full of stubble and a hint of carelessness. There seemed to be a melancholic and unfulfilled aura enveloping oneself, both proud and decadent, full of contradictions. Simply put, it means being both delicious and fond of dressing up. The master in the gatekeeper's mouth just glanced at him and ignored him. He then looked at old Jack and said, Sir, can you show me the proof of the martial soul hall? Seeing that the gatekeeper was so respectful, old Jack immediately understood that the person in front of him could help him. Hurriedly handed over the proof in hand. Yu Xiao Jiang looked at the proof and looked at Yi Chiu and the others with some surprise, more towards Tang San. Tang San clenched his fist and for some reason, he had a feeling of being seen through. From then on, Yi Chiu understood. These two have already started to look at each other, the gears of fate are about to start turning. This proof is all true, sir. On behalf of the college, I apologize to you for what happened just now. Leave these two children to me. A casual apology gave old Jack great satisfaction. After all, the other party is likely a noble soul master. Old Jack quickly waved his hands. This master is serious, and we also have some shortcomings. Master, then these two children will trouble you. 
Hmm. Yu Xiaojiang nodded coldly. Old Jack reminded Yi Chiu and the others a few more words. You must be obedient in the college, Grandpa Jack will leave first. Tang San nodded but did not speak. Well, goodbye Grandpa Jack. Be careful on the way back. Yi Chiu waved at the back of Old Jack as he left, watching him leave. The master calmly glanced at the gatekeeper and said coldly. This is the first and last time, do you understand? I understand, I understand. Master, please take your time. A cold sweat broke out from behind the gatekeeper, and while responding urgently, he quickly cleared the way. Yu Xiaojiang lowered his head to look at Tang San Yi Chiu, with an ugly smile squeezed out of his stiff face. Let's go, let's go in. Extending his rough hand, he grabbed at the small hands of both of them. Yi Chiu dodged sideways, a single middle dot aged man of such age with such a poor complexion. Who knows what that hand had done? Tang San was caught by Yu Xiaojiang. Tang San and Yu Xiaojiang both glanced at Yi Chiu without realizing it was strange. It was normal for children to be afraid of strangers. No surprises. Yi Chiu and Tang San were both taken away by Yu Xiaojiang. Walking in the college, Yi Chiu looked around curiously. Teacher, thank you. Tang San, on the other hand, seemed to feel the master's uniqueness and thanked him. Teacher, Yu Xiaojiang murmured softly, taking a deep look at Tang San, but quietly stopped walking. I'm not a teacher at this college. But didn't you just mention representing the college? Tang San asked in confusion. Yu Xiaojiang chuckled and said, who said that only the teachers of this college can represent the college? Upon hearing this, Yi Chiu couldn't help but roll her eyes inwardly. This is really shameless. So who are you? A mysterious smile appeared on Yu Xiaojiang's face, and he said lightly, I'm just a resident who just grasps food and drinks. Puke cough. Yi Chiu's mouth twitched and almost couldn't help but laugh, so she quickly coughed twice as a cover. Yu Xiaojiang gave Yi Chiu a faint glance before continuing to say. In the future, you should still call me Master. Everyone calls me that way, and I even forgot my original name. If you really want to call me Teacher, unless. Speaking of this, Yu Xiaojiang paused and looked at Tang San with fiery eyes. The picture is full of daggers. Unless you really want me to be your teacher. What do you think? Tang San looked at him quietly. Yi Chiu also quietly watched the two of them, muttering a watermelon-flavored lollipop. There was no response from Tang San. Yu Xiaojiang also nodded with a stiff smile, pinching his chin and speaking in astonishment, besides the blue silver grass martial soul, what is your other martial soul? Dot. Tang San's pupils shook violently, his heart was shocked, and the sleeve arrow on his left wrist opened the safety again. Is it an enemy or a friend? Tang San's somewhat cold gaze swept over Yi Chiu next to him without a trace. How did you know? He asked with an unchanged expression, starting with a murderous heart. Yi Chiu pretended to be shocked as he looked at Tang San, and all the melons in his mouth fell to the ground. My heart is filled with a chill. This little rascal just now actually had a murderous intent on him. He he truly deserves to be the Tang Buddha master. Before, in front of Tang Hao, there was a look of mutual help. Master you didn't even know that his name on the life and death pole had already begun to flicker. Still in the presence of the old god, he gave Tang San a hard smile, trying to appear friendly, gentle, and approachable. You're strange. Can I know you're a twin martial soul? As he spoke, he raised the martial soul certificate in his hand. Others may not see the secrets behind it, but I am a master. I have spent my whole life researching martial souls, and I have investigated 647 owners of blue silver grass martial souls. Dot. According to one of the ten core competencies of martial soul that I have proposed, the size of innate soul power is directly proportional to the quality of martial soul. It is impossible for a mere blue silver grass root to have innate full soul power. 
So, I can confirm that you have another very powerful martial soul, and you are the third twin martial soul owner in history. In a lengthy and resolute discourse by Yu Xiao Jiang, Tang San's heart was greatly shaken, and his cold killing intent completely restrained. With just a martial soul certificate, one can infer so much. The name of a master truly deserves it. Even Yi Chiu on the side couldn't help but feel a little stunned. Yu Xiao Jiang had such strong confidence in his immature theories. If you really want to deceive others, you must first deceive yourself. Tang San still had the last doubt in his heart. He reached out his right hand and saw a small blue grass swaying on it. Others say that my blue silver grass is a useless martial soul. Can even a useless martial soul be cultivated? Yu Xiaojiang remained silent for a moment, carrying his hands on his back and looking up at the sky at a 45 degree angle. Calmly said, I have always believed that there are no useless martial souls, only useless soul masters. As soon as these words were spoken, they immediately attracted widespread attention from all sectors of society. Even General MacArthur, a five dot star general, said, I have never seen such a shameless person. Tang San's eyes lit up and a funny smile curved around his mouth. Not bad this person is qualified to be my teacher. Closing the insurance, he took a step back and widened the distance between himself and the master. Then, with a bang, both knees fell to the ground. Dudu dudu. I kowtowed respectfully to the master three times in a row. In a daze. Yi Chiu seemed to hear Tang San kneeling on the ground and shouting, Daddy, to Yu Xiao Jiang. If I don't give up, I am foolish and willing to worship as my adoptive father. Yu Xiao Jiang was also stunned on the spot. What are you doing? Kneeling and bowing down is just a courtesy to respect the king and parents. A day as a teacher, a lifetime as a father. Please accept Tang San's worship. As he spoke, Tang San knocked again, his forehead turning red. Good, good, good one day as a teacher, lifelong as a father. Yu Xiaojiang nodded with a moved expression and quickly bent down to help his big son up. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Seven Houses You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Seven Houses Yu Xiaojiang helped Tang San up and held his little hand again. But her gaze drifted towards Yi Chiu. On the martial soul certificate, your name is Yi Chiu, right? Yi Chiu nodded in a daze, as if he had not yet regained his senses. Although I haven't seen your martial soul before, I think it should be a mutated martial soul. Otherwise, as a commoner, you would definitely not be able to awaken your innate full soul power. I don't know. Are you willing to worship me as your teacher? He, Yu Xiaojiang, has always been thrifty and thrifty, never leaving a single grain of rice in his bowl. He is naturally full of soul power. Although he is not as good as Tang San, he can still cultivate Tang San for himself and eliminate many thunder. In just a few words, I made an analysis and wanted to take in a godson. Tang San also looked at Yi Chiu, and it seemed to be a very effective shortcut for his father to persuade him to become a senior brother. Upon hearing this, Yi Chiu shook her head wildly, looking at the bag on Tang San's forehead with a hint of fear in her eyes. No, no, I like a carefree life. Besides daily cultivation and learning, I won't constrain you at any other time, explained Yu Xiaojiang. Despite this, Yi Chiu didn't want to be his little mouse and shook his head decisively. Yu Xiaojiang frowned, feeling proud in his heart that he no longer persisted. Well, in the soul master realm, one can only recognize one master in their lifetime. You really should think carefully. This is a pun, seemingly telling Yi Chiu, but actually telling Tang San. You can't get rid of me, kid. Looking at Yi Chiu, Tang San's eyes flashed with disappointment, but he suddenly spoke up. Yi Chiu, as a friend, I hope you can help me keep the secret of my twin martial souls. Don't worry. My mouth is so tight. Yi Chiu watched as the two of them stared at her tightly and quickly nodded. I'm afraid that if I agree a little slower, 
I will be judged by Tang Buddha as the way to take death. All right, come with me, I'll take you to report. Yu Xiaojiang nodded in satisfaction and led Tang San towards the reporting location. Yi Qiu quickly followed and wiped a cold sweat that didn't exist on her forehead. I never expected it. And thus became a one dot sided friend of Tang Fozu. Quickly, Yu Xiaojiang sent Yi Qiujiu and Tang San to the reporting location before leaving. The two of them received their school uniforms and walked towards their dormitories. That's where everything starts. Chisha. As soon as she arrived at the door, the dormitory gate was open, and Yi Qiu also heard the playful noise coming from inside. With a flash of black eyes, Tang San's figure fell behind without any trace. Follow Tang San and walk in. As soon as I entered the door, my first impression was that it was spacious. There were dozens of beds in sight, but only eleven of them had bedding on them. At this moment, there were seven or eight children aged between eight and twelve playing around. Dudu. Yi Chiu watched quietly as Tang San knocked on the door next to him. Upon hearing the sound, the playful children immediately turned their gaze towards it. Retrieving their gaze towards Yi Chiu, the children looked at each other and focused their gaze on one of the older children. I think that's Wang Sheng. Yi Chiu secretly thought to herself, holding her school uniform and standing behind Tang San with peace of mind. I saw the person slowly walking out of the many children's arches, looking at Tang San and then at Yi Chiu. The clothes on Yi Chiu and his wife, although relatively neat, were covered in patches, making it easy to guess their identities. He is taller than Tang San by two heads and has a relatively burly physique. When he walked up to Tang San and the two of them, he looked a bit condescending and said. A new engineering student. Hello, we are working dot class students from Holy Soul Village. Tang San nodded lightly and a friendly smile appeared on his face. Hello. Upon encountering Wang Xing's gaze, Yi Chiu also gave a friendly greeting. Wang Xing nodded and hugged his arms, looking quite proud. Let's get to know each other. My name is Wang Sheng, the Soul Warrior Tiger, the future Soul Warrior. This is the leader here, kid. What are your names? What is the Soul Warrior? My name is Tang San, and my martial soul is Blue Silver Grass, Tang San frowned and said lightly. Blue Silver Grass. When will this kind of useless martial soul be able to cultivate? Wang Sheng showed extreme surprise, and most of the children in the dormitory laughed along. Before Yi Chiu could speak, Wang Sheng couldn't wait any longer. All right, mistress. I'll be your boss from now on. As long as you listen well, I'll. My name is Tang San, not Xiao Sanzi. Tang San's face turned cold, and before Wang Sheng could finish speaking, he interrupted his words. At the same time, he also glanced at Yi Chiu behind him. Yi Chiu pouted and, as a friend, shouted, What's wrong with the mistress? I'll call you, mistress, why not? Are you not convinced? If you have the ability, you can beat me. If you win me, I'll call you, boss. Wang Sheng raised his hand and pushed Tang San's shoulder, causing him to take two steps back involuntarily. Yi Chiu smiled. Yi Chiu, help me take it. Tang San also smiled, gently shook his head, turned around, and placed the school uniform in Yi Chiu's hand. In order to be happy and study hard here, Tang San decided to give back Wang Sheng's imposing power. Come on. Arrogantly waved to Wang Sheng. Okay. Wang Sheng shouted and immediately punched Tang San. Suddenly, he realized that Tang San in front of him had disappeared. Yi Chiu could see clearly that Tang San had already taken a swift step, and with a graceful turn, he had already arrived behind Wang Sheng. The two of them turned their backs, but without turning around, they hit Wang Sheng's waist with an elbow strike. At the same time, they stumbled and before Wang Sheng could react, he had already fallen out. Fortunately, he is not small and has stabilized his trading position, otherwise he might fall and eat shit. Okay, 
you little mistress. Look for a fight. Being beaten by a child, Wang Sheng was furious and suddenly a yellow halo appeared on his body. A low roar like a tiger, emanating from his mouth, has greatly improved his strength, speed, and other attributes. Did you use the martial soul? Yi Chiu's eyes flashed with light, and the mech's eyes seemed to have a built that I an insight function. Yi Chiu could still see the movements of both of them very clearly. Tang San's gaze turned cold. Although curious about the power of the martial soul, he was not afraid either. Not to mention the unique skills of the Tang clan, his power to wield forging hammers thousands of times is enough to handle it calmly. Wang Xingli leaped up to Tang San and punched him in the face. Tang San reached out his hand and with a flick of his wrist, he took off all his strength. Wang Xing felt a pain in his wrist and couldn't move. Suddenly, a strange force came from him, and his arm was swung open. Tang San pressed his knee against his belly, teaching him how to be a good person. Ah ah. In the midst of Wang Sheng's exclamation, he was directly thrown over the shoulder by Tang San and thrown onto the ground. Tang San didn't want his relationship to become too strained, so he placed his foot on the back of his head. Can you speak well now? Tang San used a grasping technique and pinched his wrist, saying calmly. Xiao. Tang San, yes, yes. Wang Sheng, who had intended to speak wildly, immediately shouted loudly after Tang San began to exert his strength. Upon hearing Wang Sheng's address, Tang San also let go of him. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 The Arrival of Little Dance You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The Arrival of Little Dance, Tang San, Is Your Martial Soul Really Blue Silver Grass? Wang Xing got up from the ground and moved his wrist, feeling lingering palpitations. Of course. Feeling overwhelmed, Tang San raised his right hand and a faint blue light surged out of his palm, revealing a swaying little grass. Tang San told the students in the dormitory with facts that he did not lie. So you can be so strong. This is not only Wang Xing's doubt, but also the doubts of others in the dormitory. Because he has innate soul power. And it's also the third young master of the Tang sect. Yi Chiu's voice came from behind Tang San, and at the same time, she was also in her heart, adding the latter half of the sentence. What? Innate full of soul power. Wang Xing's face changed greatly, and the other students in the dormitory were also in an uproar. They never imagined that there would be a genius with innate soul power among the working dot class students. Yi Chiu. Tang San frowned as he looked at Yi Chiu. Xian Tian Baolu told him never to reveal his full strength in front of others. Although it is true that innate soul power cannot be hidden, he still has some displeasure towards Yi Chiu. However, Yi Chiu ignored him and placed the clothes in his hand on the empty bed next to him. A complex light flashed in Wang Xing's eyes, both envy and regret. Tang San, I was really sorry just now. This is something that every newcomer will encounter. As working dot class students, we are often bullied by other students, so we must unite together. Tang San couldn't help but smile. So, did you just give me a surprise and then include me? Yi Chiu didn't have time to listen to them talk about these non-nutritious things. He had three anxieties and had already asked the nearby students for the location of the restroom. Xiao San, I'll go and drain the excess water from my body first. Let's talk slowly. Well, go ahead. After greeting Tang San, Yi Chiu ran outside. He had to quickly solve the problem and come back to compete for the position of the boss. He is not confident in dealing with Tang San, but when it comes to dealing with the rogue rabbit, Yi Chiu thinks there is still no problem. Wang Sheng, who was interrupted by Yi Chiu, turned blush and smiled awkwardly. It's you who gave me a push. Now that you've defeated me, you'll be the leader of our seven houses in the future. Tang San quickly waved his hand and refused, saying, I'm here to learn. Seeing that Tang San wanted to evade, 
Wang Sheng had no choice but to roll up his clothes and show Tang San some color. I saw large bruises on his body and arms. Wang Sheng lifted a bitter smile at the corner of his mouth and said, These are all things I did when I first arrived at the college yesterday. People from other dormitories often bully us working dot class students. As the leader of the dormitory, I have to take on the responsibility of standing up for my brothers and protecting them. I wish I could hand over this responsibility to you. The students in the other dormitories also kept nodding their heads, eagerly looking at Tang San. The weak could only rely on the stronger. After Wang Sheng and his team were moved and reasonable, Tang San also took over the position of the leader of the seven houses, no longer refusing, and nodded slightly. In that case, I naturally wouldn't see people in the same dormitory being bullied. At this moment, a crisp and pleasant sound suddenly came from the entrance of the seven houses. Is this Chisha? Everyone looked at the door at the same time, suddenly showing a stunned expression and standing still. I saw a pretty little girl standing outside the door, looking similar in age and height to Tang San, with a scorpion braid on her back. Tang San, who had just become the boss, couldn't help but raise his hand to block his mouth and ask Wang Sheng, are we mixed up here? Wang Sheng nodded in a daze, his eyes not moving at all, and he lowered his voice, saying, this room has enough 40 or 50 beds. With such a large space, the academy is not a good hall, and everyone is still young. I heard that only the Intermediate Soul Master Academy can distinguish them. While speaking, Wang Sheng also came to his senses and poked Tang San's waist. Boss, go up. Give her a thumbs up. Ah. Isn't that enough? Tang San didn't expect that as soon as he became the boss, he would have to attack a pink little girl. The little girl at the door blinked her innocent big eyes, frowned slightly, and looked inside without anyone paying attention to her. She had to look up again at the sign on the door of that red, seven houses, her brows furrowed even deeper. Can't I go in? Watching this scene, Wang Xing became a bit anxious and kept poking Tang San's waist, signaling that he couldn't break the rules. Tang San had no choice but to pace forward and stand in front of her. Hello, I'm Tang San, the boss here. It's like this. Our seventh dormitory has a rule that new work students should showcase their abilities. So, I'd like to spar with you. Duel. Are you sure? The little girl's crimson eyes suddenly lit up as she mentioned the duel. Sure. Tang San nodded lightly. All right, then come on. The little girl showed a hint of excitement on her face and placed the school uniform she was holding on to the empty bed next to her. Turning around to look at Tang San, I made a brief self-introduction. My name is Xiao Wu, the dance of dancing, and the martial soul is a rabbit. That kind of cute little white rabbit, I am born with full soul power. What about you? Speaking, two cute dimples appeared on his face, indescribably moving. Tang San, who had been addicted to hidden weapons in his past life and had little contact with the opposite sex, suddenly became a bit stunned. However, Wang Sheng and others boiled the pot in the second round. Surprisingly, it's another innate soul power. Hmm. Xiao Wu gave Wang Sheng and others a strange glance, then turned to Tang San. Oh, my martial soul is blue silver grass, also possessing innate full soul power. Tang San was stunned and quickly replied. Blue silver grass. Can this kind of martial soul also have innate soul power? Xiao Wu tilted her head and looked at Tang San in surprise. Although strange, she just roast a little. Then let's get started. She greeted Tang San with joy, but before he could react, her right leg had already bent and risen, and her toe popped out like a fork. Her left foot was still in place, and the tip of her right foot had already poked towards Tang San's chin. It didn't seem very powerful, but the speed was very fast, which startled Tang San. But Tang San quickly reacted, regained his composure, and quickly retreated. Xiao Wu kicked her left foot, but it continued to fly towards him. 
Her light body swept through the air, and a jade foot had already swept towards Tang San's head. With a loud bang. Xiao Wu's ankle was grabbed by Tang San, and he also noticed that Xiao Wu was extraordinary. He was a little more serious and threw her out with a backhand. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 First meeting of the rogue rabbit you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 First meeting of the rogue rabbit ah. The onlookers exclaimed in surprise, thinking that such a delicate girl was about to have an intimate contact with the floor. Xiao Wu twisted her body and landed steadily, which surprised Tang San, who had originally planned to come forward to receive her. Shu. Xiao Wu didn't know what Wuda meant. Unexpectedly, she pressed her small hand against the ground and leaped high, using a deadly scissor foot to directly clip onto Tang San's head. Pop Tang San is not a vegetarian either, he easily blocked Xiao Wu's attack with both hands. Both feet were blocked, and Xiao Wu didn't stop attacking. She exerted force on her waist and head together. The whole body folded up, and the long scorpion braid swung towards Tang San's black face. So fast. Tang San was amazed in his heart. He let go of his hand and was about to retreat, but it was already too late. Xiao Wu's little feet have already hooked around his neck. Pop. Hiss, the scorpion braid mercilessly swung onto Tang San's face, leaving a red mark. The burning pain on his face made him take a deep breath. Take advantage of his illness to kill him. Xiao Wu immediately landed, and her little foot kicked him directly from bottom to top on the chin. Bayu Tang San let out a scream and flew high, drawing a beautiful arc in the air. With a thud, he fell to the ground. Just as she was about to get up, Xiao Wu had already stepped forward and stepped on Tang San's body. She looked down at Tang San with a proud expression on her face. How about it? I won. As Tang San watched Xiao Wu stomping on his feet, he gave a bitter smile. There was no need to be naughty. He had no feelings for the position of the boss and explained. Well, I lost. According to our rules, if you win against me, you will become the leader of Chisha in the future. Boss. Xiao Wu's eyes showed a hint of surprise, not much surprise, but more excitement. It seems like it's a lot of fun, okay. Then I'll be your boss from now on. In front of Daiming and Erming, she, who was used to being the head of the big sister, quickly entered the role. With his waist inserted, he shouted loudly to Wang Sheng and others, listen up to me. From now on, I will be your boss. I am Xiao Wu, a dance girl. In the future, you must call me Xiao Wu sister. Come on, come on, hurry up and call out to listen. Unexpectedly, Tang San would lose to Xiao Wu. Wang Sheng and others came to their senses from shock and quickly shouted at Xiao Wu in unison. Hello, little dance sister. Hello. Hello everyone. Xiao Wu was excited and didn't expect to come to the human world. She was also a big sister. Xiao Wu, can you spare me? At this moment, a weak voice came from under her feet. Although Xiao Wu's weight was not heavy, Tang San was still just a child. Xiao Wu was stunned for a moment, feeling a sense of unease under her feet. She lowered her head and looked down. Originally, Tang San was still trampled on by him. Oh. I've forgotten about you. Xiao Wu chuckled and took a light step, jumping onto the ground, still reminding Tang San. Remember to call me little dance sister. Tang San gave a bitter smile and silently got up. It was impossible for him to call him sister. Thank you. Upon hearing this, Xiao Wu chuckled and said, Haha. You're quite interesting. You're not angry when I hit you like this. On the contrary, you thanked me. Outside the seven houses, carrying her own waist belt, Yi Chiu, who had just finished urinating, had not yet walked to the door when she heard a chorus of greetings coming from inside. Quickly approaching, when she saw the scene inside clearly, Yi Chiu was taken aback for a moment, with a hint of surprise in her eyes. 
I saw a pretty little girl stepping on Tang San. Surprisingly, Master Tang Buddha has not yet resisted. Is this the 100,000-year-old rogue rabbit dance? It sells well. Yi Chiu whispered in her heart, with a hint of amazement in her eyes. I saw that little dance, with a pretty little face that was white and rosy, and a pink and tender appearance like a ripe peach, which made people very eager to take a bite. Despite her simple attire, she looked very neat, with long black hair arranged in a scorpion braid hanging over her hips. A pair of watery big eyes exuded novelty, and as soon as she stepped on the ground, she also noticed Yi Chiu looking at her at the door. Black broken hair, big eyes like black pearls, fair complexion, wearing a patchwork coarse linen garment. Seeing someone coming, Xiao Wu pointed to Yi Chiu at the door and excitedly asked Wang Sheng, is he also new here? Wang Sheng was taken aback for a moment. Although Yi Chiu came with Tang San, he had not yet undergone a review. So he nodded. That's good. Xiao Wu's face was filled with surprise, and she hooked her fingers directly at Yi Chiu. You, it's you. What are you looking at? Come here and fight for it. Watching Xiao Wu's domineering expression, Yi Chiu couldn't help but see several black lines on her forehead, which can only be said to be truly a rogue rabbit. I don't know if she would jump out like this if she found out that Tang San and his father were posthumously titled Dolo. Tang San watched quietly from the side without saying anything to stop him. As someone with innate soul power like himself, he also wants to see how strong Yi Chiu is. After all, Yi Chiu came with Tang San, fearing that he might not understand the situation, Wang Sheng also explained. This is Xiao Wu. Just defeated Tang Sancheng and became our new boss. Yi Chiu shrugged and slowly walked into the dormitory, not forgetting to squeeze Tang San. Xiao San, I just went to drain the water. Why doesn't your boss have a spot left? Tang San tugged at the corner of his mouth, he was just disdainful of bullying a girl. If you think you're capable, you can give it a try. Maybe you can defeat Xiao Wu and become the leader of Qi Shi, said lightly, that's right, Tang San is right. As long as you win against Xiao Wu's sister, this boss's position will be yours. Xiao Wu's crimson eyes were eagerly looking at Yi Chiu. All right. You're not allowed to act rashly then. How can a man say no? Yi Chiu pursed his lips and accepted the battle with a smile. Xiao Wu doesn't know how to be naughty. What's your name and martial soul? Xiao Wu jumped to a slightly wider position and asked with a smile. Yi Chiu stood opposite her, looking up and down at her. My name is Yi Chiu, and my martial soul is a versatile mech with innate full soul power. Are you also naturally full of soul power? Xiao Wu looked at Yi Chiu in surprise, and lightly tapped her chin with her index finger. Wanxiang Mecha what kind of martial soul is that? What? Another innate full soul power. The other students in Qisha were once again shocked, and Wang Sheng almost dropped his chin. Unexpectedly, last year there were no working dot class students, and this year there were only three, all of whom were born with full soul power. This is like heaven wants to make him happy seven times. Faced with Xiao Wu's question, Yi Chiu just hooked her finger and looked at her arrogantly. I want to know what my martial soul looks like. If you've fought it, you'll know. New books require follow dot up reading. Wishing everyone a happy life. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Xiao Wu vs Yi Chiu You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Chapter 8 Xiao Wu vs Yi Chiu Humph, Fight, Fight. My name is Xiao Wu, the dance of dancing. The martial soul is the soft bone rabbit, and it is also innate full soul power. Seeing that Yi Chiu dared to provoke herself, Xiao Wu briefly introduced herself, and a pair of pink and tender rabbit ears stood up on her head. There was also a small ball of pink and white tail on her back waist. We're starting. As he spoke, a cunning expression appeared on his face. Without waiting for Yi Chiu to respond, he kicked a rabbit and launched. 
Leaping into the air, he made a somersault and kicked his two feet directly towards Yi Chiu's chest. Dead rabbit, you sneak attack. Yi Chiu was surprised in his heart, but fortunately he was on guard against this guy who didn't speak of martial arts. His eyes lit up with a bright light, and blue lines appeared on his body surface, flowing like liquid. Silently, the white and blue steel armor covered Yi Chiu's body, with sharp edges that looked full of attack power. The surface of the body shone brightly, and the streamlined design integrated seamlessly. Click. With a faint sound echoing in Yi Chiu's ear, the face armor covered her small face. A sense of heaviness struck, and in just an instant, the Wanxian Mecca was possessed. At this moment, Xiaowu's rabbit's leg kick had already reached Yi Chiu's eyes. But in Yi Chiu's shining eyes, her movement seemed to slow down. Even some basic data were obtained by Yi Chiu, such as the uniform size of Jade Feet Bang. Yi Chiu crossed her arms in front of her and forcefully accepted Xiao Wu's attack. Dada! The heavy mecha only took Yi Chiu two steps back, and the superior defense of the Wanxiang mecha also prevented Yi Chiu from taking any damage. What is this thing? Rolling in the air, taking off the recoil, Xiao Wu quietly landed and looked at Yi Chiu in confusion. How handsome! Wang Sheng looked at the steel warrior that Yi Chiu Hua had transformed into, and small stars were about to appear in his eyes. The blue and white mecha, with its sharp edges and curves, is slender and graceful, like a living weapon. The other group of students in the dormitory also nodded in agreement. Sure enough, no matter in which world, Boys cannot resist the temptation of mechas. This is my martial soul. The sound of Yi Chiu mixed with mechanical sensation sounded, but she had already rushed towards Xiao Wu's direction. Humph. You dared to call Xiao Wu's sister a dead rabbit just now, let me not punish you. Xiao Wu pouted without any fear, her soft skills were not vegetarian. Watching Yi Chiu's unprofessional straight punch, Tang San shook his head on the side. After all, he is still a child, and fighting is just like a child, with no skills to speak of. Yi Chiu punched Xiao Wu's delicate face with an iron fist. The eyes of the mecha couldn't help but flicker, and Yi Chiu also furrowed her brows. Surprisingly, her fists kept a little distance from Xiao Wu's face. Activate the limited soul power in the body, and the movements on the hands accelerate rapidly. I saw Xiao Wu blink her crimson eyes, with a smile on her lips, and she bent down directly. Her lower body was upright, but her upper body was already lying down, leaving Yi Chiu feeling empty. At the same time, Xiao Wu also extended her hand, propped it up on the ground, and then lifted her feet off the ground, as if she had just flipped over in place. After borrowing strength with both hands, the two legs hit directly below Yi Chiu and kicked her under the chin. With this iron knot around, Xiao Wu doesn't have to worry about making Yi Chiu unable to get out of bed. At this moment, Yi Chiu Gong had just delivered a heavy punch and didn't have time to retract his body, but he wouldn't let Xiao Wu kick his sharp chin. Since it can't be collected, then it won't be collected. Ah! At that moment, Yi Chiu ran straight into Xiao Wu, who was still standing upside down and exclaimed in surprise. Immediately, he bent his arms and gave up attacking Yi Chiu, flipping back. After standing still, he patted his small chest and looked at Yi Chiu with lingering fear. Little rabbit, come again. Yi Chiu hooked her hook finger again and made a slight sound of wanting to beat her. Ah! See if Xiao Wu doesn't kill you. Being called a rabbit by Yi Chiu several times, Xiao Wu also became a bit crazy. Watching Yi Chiu rushing towards her, she kicked her foot again and instead shook herself back. At this thought, she dared not confront Yi Chiu directly, but kept jumping and wandering around. Yi Chiu kept pouncing, although her speed was much faster than usual under the bonus of the mech, she still had some strength when facing the jumping rogue rabbit. Breathing, the sound of her own rapid breathing came from her ear, and Yi Chiu also understood that with her current soul power, she couldn't hold on for long. If you want to catch her, you have to wait for a rabbit. 
With all her strength, Yi Chiu once again called out the double dragons to go out to sea and threw them at Xiao Wu's small body. Xiao Wu snorted coldly twice and immediately jumped up high, leaping directly over Yi Chiu's head and landing behind her. Previously, her feet had already locked onto Yi Chiu's head, which was uneven and hard, making it impossible to use soft techniques well. Therefore, Xiao Wu, who seized the opportunity, shook the back of her head directly. The long scorpion braid, like a long snake, directly wrapped around Yi Chiu's neck. The outcome has been decided, Tang San smiled faintly, gaining some understanding of Yi Chiu's strength. It shouldn't be difficult to defeat Wang Sheng, but the combat skills are too lackluster to use despite having strength. Humph. Xiao Wu gave a cold smile and was about to push her right foot back onto Yi Chiu's buttocks, then bend down and throw Yi Chiu into the sky, making a sudden drop. Unfortunately, how could Yi Chiu make her wish come true? Just as she felt her neck tighten, Yi Chiu turned around in the surprised eyes of Tang San, Wang Sheng, and others. Open your hands and have a bear hug with Xiao Wu. Xiao Wu was about to bend down and pout her buttocks, using her soft skills, but she found a cold sensation emanating from her buttocks, making it impossible to kick her legs back. Yi Chiu had already approached, pressing against her and interrupting her skills. Ah, you, you quickly let go of me. Let go, Xiao Wu, who was about to escape, exclaimed in surprise and was embraced by Yi Chiu. With two sharp and angular mecha arms covered in cold steel armor, she tightly locked Xiao Wu in her arms. Hurry up and let go of Xiao Wu, or I'll kill you. Ah, let go of me. No matter how hard Xiao Wu struggles, under absolute power, it is just a futile effort. Don't let go. Unless you give up. If you give up, I'll let you go. Yi Chiu's magnetic voice rang in Xiao Wu's ear. The Wanxiang mech does not block Yi Chiu's touch, tightly holding the soft girl in her arms, and Yi Chiu's face inside the mech can't help but show a hint of contentment. Undoubtedly a soft bone rabbit, with a soft and boneless body, the feeling of holding it in my arms is really great. You can't believe it. Miss Xiaowu wouldn't give up. The struggling Xiaowu's face was scorching hot, and a little sweat had already oozed from her forehead. New books require follow dot up reading. Wishing everyone a happy life. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Embracing a sister and killing you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 9. Embracing a sister and killing, okay. If you don't give up, I won't let go. Yi Chiu smiled and couldn't let go at such times, otherwise it wouldn't be good to be beaten later. Watching the two of them deadlocked in place, Wang Sheng and Tang San looked at each other. Ah. I'm so angry. Xiao Wu's small face turned red, and Yi Chiu's uneven body made her feel a little pain. Being locked like this also makes me feel very frustrated. Xiao Wu, step on you, step on you. Xiao Jiao Yazi suddenly started to move, constantly stepping on the back of Yi Chiu's foot. The mocking voice of Yi Chiu rang out. Don't waste your effort, I don't hurt at all. Xiao Wu also noticed this, this bastard was hiding in that turtle shell, but instead his heel was hurting. Little rabbit, quickly give up. Yi Chiu tightly hugged Xiao Wu, not daring to slack off at all. Ah. No way, go to hell with you. Xiao Wu's temper was completely ignited by the sound of the little rabbit, and she forcefully tilted her head back, startling Yi Chiu. Puff. Ah Wu it hurt so much, after a muffled sound, there was a scream. Yi Chiu's face armor was not made of mud. Xiao Wu felt a big bump coming out of her head, her crimson eyes bulging with tears. Continuously flapping his two slender calves, struggling hard. You bastard. Let go of Xiao Wu. Xiao Wu is going to kill you. Wu Wu, don't let go, don't let go. Unless you give up. Yi Chiu tightened her arms again. No. I don't want to give up, Xiao Wu gritted her teeth and fiercely glanced back. Yi Chiu. At this moment, 
Tang San couldn't bear to watch anymore and couldn't help but scream. Yi Chiu, why don't you let go of Xiao Wu? After all, she's a little girl. Your behavior is a bit despicable. Despicable. Yi Chiu couldn't help but roll her eyes inside the mech. Compared to the malicious hidden weapons of your Tang sect, she was at least fair and upright. If I were to say despicable, it wouldn't be your turn, Master Tang Buddha, to teach me a lesson, would it? Thinking like this in my heart, but not speaking like that. Third, you just heard me. If I let go of her, she will have to kill me. How can this be done? Yi Chiu's voice was filled with fear, shaking her head like a tambourine and sternly refusing. Don't let it go. Resolutely don't let it go. Dot. Tang San was stunned for a moment, then turned his head to look at Xiao Wu. You shut up, little dance sister will definitely not spare him. Just as she was about to say something, Xiao Wu let out a roar. Looking at Xiao Wu's angry expression, Tang San probably wouldn't listen to him. He had no choice but to shake his head and close his mouth. Yeah. Xiao Wu exerted all her strength, constantly struggling, and beads of sweat began to fall from her forehead. In no time, he had already become panting. Yi Chiu, who was as stable as an old dog, suddenly whispered in her heart that something was wrong. Her soul power was running out. Looking at Xiao Wu, who was already powerless to struggle, under her face armor, her black eyes flickered and a hint of mockery appeared at the corner of her mouth. Little rabbit, do you admit defeat or not? You, you can't think of it, Xiao Wu bent over, panting heavily, speaking with difficulty and gasping for breath. Since that's the case, then don't blame me. Yi Chiu sneered and immediately took advantage of her absence to turn her body around. Ah you, what are you doing? Let go of me quickly. Xiao Wu looked at her in front of her, with a steel face and a flustered hand and foot dance. Yi Chiu ignored her and instead tentatively slowly let go of one hand. The little rabbit now had no strength, just wriggling and struggling. When Yi Chiu's hand was completely empty, a smile of success appeared at the corner of her mouth. Yi Chiu's martial soul is possessed, and after wearing 10,000 camera armor, compared to Xiao Wu, her body size is much larger. Hold the rabbit's small body with one hand. Ask, let me ask again for the last time, do you really admit defeat? Xiao Wu doesn't give up. You quickly let go of me. You can't hold on anymore, can you? Xiao Wu also noticed that the force that was restraining her had decreased a lot. Immediately, he became somewhat proud again. Humph, wait for Xiao Wu to beat you to death. Ah woe. Pop Yi Chokong's hand quickly patted her perky buttocks, and it parted at a touch. A crisp sound came, and Xiao Wu suddenly let out a whimper. Her face turned red and slowly spread towards her neck. Tang San and Wang Sheng, among others, were also shocked to see this scene. When Xiao Wu first arrived, they looked straight in the eye and didn't expect Yi Chiu to actually get started. What are you doing? Let go of Xiao Wu, Xiao Wu suddenly panicked in her heart, shouting and struggling in a twisted manner. Whenever you give up, I'll let you go. Yi Chiu held her tightly with one hand, but the other hand had already taken off the mecha. This kind of thing, of course, cannot be separated from the mech. Yi Chiu is also afraid that she may not be able to control her strength little hands clapped directly at Xiao Wu's buttocks, and Xiao Wu struggled in panic and spoke up to stop her. Ah you, stop it. Whispering. Unfortunately, Yi Chiu's words to her seemed unheard of, and she slapped the soft flesh one by one. Pop pop. Every two draws, Yi Chiu would ask her. Do you really admit defeat or not? You can't imagine it Xiao Wu must kill you. Hmm. Xiao Wu blushed, bit her red lips, and stubbornly stared at Yi Chiu. Pop. Yi Chiu waved his hand again and asked again. Gradually, Xiao Wu in her arms was covered in sweat and had no strength to struggle anymore. After hitting twice again, when Yi Chiu asked again, 
Xiao Wu finally couldn't resist. A soft and teary voice sounded, no. Upon hearing the word, no more, Yi Chiu habitually typed it again. Before Yi Chiu could ask, Xiao Wu's voice quickly came. No. Stop fighting, Xiao Wu's sister. Xiao Wu's sister gave up, sobbing. Xiao Wu's sister gave up. Upon hearing this, Yi Chiu first felt a sense of joy in her heart, and then froze for a moment. At this moment, the rogue rabbit was already covered in tears, with a hint of resentment in his eyes. Seeing her appearance, there was still a hint of hatred in her eyes. Although Yi Chiu couldn't bear it, she still let go of her own little hand for the sake of her personal safety. Pop. Ah, Xiao Wu's sister has given up, she has already given up. Don't fight anymore. Xiao Wu is crying and crying, hurry up and beg for mercy. Yi Chiu asked in reverse, where did you give up? You even dare to call yourself little dance sister. Hurry up and call brother Sheng to listen. I don't. Ah. Without hearing the answer she wanted, Yi Chiu slapped it a few times and offered it. Don't. I'll scream, I'll scream. Xiao Wu had already begun to sob, and the burning pain on her buttocks made her start to soften. Okay, shout louder for me. Yi Chiu also gasped for breath, almost unable to hold on. Dot. Xiao Wu bit her red lips and clenched her fist, seeming ashamed. She closed her eyes and shed two tears, her cherry lips slowly wriggling. Effortlessly spit out a few characters. Brother, new book for follow.up reading. Wishing everyone a happy life. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Becoming the boss of seven houses you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Becoming the boss of seven houses Watching Xiaowu's tearful expression, Tang San frowned, feeling a strange sensation in his heart. Upon hearing Xiao Wu's cry, Yi Chiu immediately felt like drinking a glass of chilled sour plum soup, indescribably sour and refreshing. Everyone said, shout a little louder, shout again. After tasting the sweetness, Yi Chiu was still somewhat dissatisfied and raised her hand again. Don't. Stop fighting, I'll scream, I'll scream, sob, as soon as Xiao Wu begged for mercy, Tang San couldn't help but jump out. Yi Chiu, don't go too far. What's the point of bullying a little girl? Little girl. Yi Chiu's mouth twitched, his thoughts relaxed, and his body suddenly relaxed. The Wanxiang mech on her body suddenly collapsed and turned into a stream of light, disappearing into Yi Chiu's body. His small face turned white, and there was also some sweat on his forehead. He couldn't hold on anymore. Xiao Wu also fell into Yi Chiu's arms. Even though Yi Chiu was no longer forcefully holding her down, she still clung tightly to Yi Chiu and kept sobbing. Biting her teeth and pulling at Yi Chiu's clothes, tears streamed down her body. Even though her soul power was exhausted, Yi Chiu still held on to her momentum and gave Tang San a faint glance. Okay, since she has already given up, I'll give you face and not make things difficult for her. Then hurry up and let go of Xiao Wu. Tang San snorted coldly, frowned, and was about to go over and help the little dance in Yi Chiu's arms. However, Yi Chiu took a step faster than him, hugging Xiao Wu's small waist and slowly walking towards an empty bed. At this moment, Xiao Wu was already crying with no strength left, allowing Yi Chiu to hold her like a string puppet. All right, you can sit here and rest for a while. Yi Chiu reached out to Xiao Wu's armpits, pinched her small body, and slowly let her sit by the bed. Ah uh ha! -huh. As soon as Xiao Wu was put down, she let out a whimper and a painful expression flashed on her face. She looked up and glared at Yi Chiu with shame and anger. Fortunately, Yi Chiu only slapped one side of her buttocks, otherwise she would have been really restless. Ha! Huh. You still want to beat me, right? But now you definitely can't beat me. Yi Chiu looked at her rosy white face, covered in dirty tears. Although she was haggard, she was still pink and tender. I couldn't help but extend my hand to knead her little face. 
Wu let go of me. Xiao Wu pouted, wanting to resist, tears in her eyes about to squeeze out again. But her hands were all placed on the edge of the bed, supporting her body. As soon as she relaxed a bit, her swollen anus felt a bit painful. Yi Chiu. Tang San also wanted to say something to stop it. All right. Third, shouldn't you change your name now? From now on, I'll be the boss of this seven houses. You'll have to call me the boss. Yi Chiu had already loosened her grip and walked up to Tang San, smiling as she patted his shoulder. Tang San frowned and was about to speak when Yi Chiu interrupted him. Huh, mistress, don't be so serious. I was just joking with you. Yi Chiu still has a lot of self-awareness. He can't jump too much now, otherwise what if Tang San suddenly says he wants to challenge himself? I have to hand over my position as the boss before my butt even gets hot. Wang Sheng, what are you looking at? Shout out and listen, Yi Chiu crossed over Tang San and looked at Wang Sheng and others behind him. Wang Sheng and others looked at each other, but still shouted at Yi Chiu, Hello boss. This is not only because of the rules of Qisha, but also because Yi Chiu is born with full soul power. Not only is he, but also Xiao Wu and Tang San. No matter who they are, Wang Sheng and others have no objections. They have already placed the three in the same position. Okay, okay. Yi Chilian exclaimed twice. No wonder Xiao Wu likes to be the head of the big sister so much. It's really satisfying to be called out like this. Tang San couldn't help but shake his head slightly as he looked at Yi Chiu, a small person who had achieved great things, and didn't want to care about these things. In the future, I will conquer him with my strength and personal charm. Unfortunately, what he didn't know was that Yi Chiu had already understood his personality charm, and he could only say that he couldn't compliment him sensing Tang San's movements, Yi Chiu also felt guilty and wiped the sweat off her forehead. Feeling a bit weak, Yi Chiu walked to the empty bed next to her, took out a pink lollipop from her package, and put it in her mouth. Sweet and delicious, it has a carrot-like taste. Xiao Wu, are you okay? Tang San walked up to Xiao Wu with a slightly concerned expression in his eyes. What can Xiao Wu do for you? Humph, the soft bone rabbit even has soft bones, but its mouth is hard. Xiao Wu gave Tang San a cold glare and ignored him. Instead, she gritted her back teeth and stared fixedly at Yi Chiu. Her small buttocks are still hot, and there is still a ripple around her eyes. Encountering another wall, Tang San also chuckled twice and turned towards Wang Sheng and the others. He is here to learn, and even if he comes to stick his cold buttocks, he cannot do it. Wang Sheng. Hey, third brother. What's up? Wang Xing responded and waited for his command. They have already discussed it, and these three who came this year are all the pillars of their working dot class students. They are all brothers and sisters. Tang San frowned. This title made him feel a bit uncomfortable. In the future, if they call Yi Chiu the eldest and call themselves the third brother outside, wouldn't it really fall under someone else's name? But he also understood what Wang Sheng and his companions called him, after all, he was indeed such a name that he could have the same name as his previous life, and he was also very satisfied with this name. I didn't say much either. I smiled gently, covering up the hint of displeasure on my face. Can you tell me something about our college? Of course not a problem. I happen to be available now. Wang Xing came to the college yesterday and packed his things. He patted himself on the chest and agreed. Subsequently, he recounted some of the situations at Nodding College. We, as working dot class students, have to obtain our own living expenses. The college will arrange some cleaning work for us. There are six grades in the college, with classes in the morning and self dot cultivation in the afternoon. Wang Sheng gave Tang San a rough introduction to the other students in the dormitory. Among them, the most talented one was Wang Sheng, who is now a level 9 soul warrior. Yi Chiu, 
who was listening to Wang Sheng's introduction while holding a lollipop, suddenly noticed a malicious gaze staring at her. Suddenly, she turned her head and realized it was the girl from Xiaowu. Yi Chiu smiled and didn't listen any longer. Instead, she quietly sat down next to Xiao Wu. What do you want to do? Xiao Wu, I won't call you boss. Xiao Wu looked at Yi Chiu cautiously, wanting to move her buttocks, but couldn't do it. I was really sorry just now. Yi Chiu smiled lightly, with a hint of apology in her eyes. The words she said made Xiao Wu feel a bit confused. New book for follow.up reading. Wishing everyone a happy life. End of this chapter.